Okay, so this time what we're going to do discuss is about ethical considerations, of course, in research. So ethical consideration is a collection of principles and values that should be followed while doing human affairs. So, so the ethical consideration makes sure that no one acts in such a way that is harmful to society or an individual. It refrains people and organizations from indulging it in vicious uh, conduct. So your whole efforts of research may get wasted if you miss following any of the ethical considerations. And to give us more details about the topic, let us all welcome our presenter. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Elmi Jongdong Palan, and I'll be reporting ethical considerations in research. Ethical considerations in research are a set of principles that guide your research designs and practices. Scientists and researchers must always adhere to a certain code of conduct when collecting data from people. So, uh, the goals of human research often include understanding uh, real-life phenomena, studying effective treatments, investigating behavior, and improving lives in other ways. What you decide to research and how you conduct the research involves key ethical considerations. These considerations work to protect the rights of human research participants, enhance research validity, and maintain scientific integrity. Next, why do we why do research ethics matter? Uh, and research ethics matter for scientific integrity, human rights and dignity, and collaboration between science and society. These principles make sure that participation in studies is voluntary, informed, and safe for research subjects. Next uh, is we have to balance pursuing important research aims with using ethical research methods and procedures. It is always necessary to prevent permanent or uh, excessive harm to participants, whether inadvertent or not. The third one is defying research ethics will also lower the credibility of your research because it's hard to uh, it's hard for others to trust your data if methods are morally questionable. Even if a research idea is valuable to society, it doesn't justify violating the human rights or dignity of your study participants. Getting ethical approval for your study. So before we start, uh, any study involving data collection with people, we have to submit our research proposal to an institutional review board or the RIB. An RIB is a committee that checks whether our research aims and research designs are ethically acceptable and follow the institution's code of conduct. They also check that your research materials and procedures are up to code. So if ever, uh, if it is successful, we can begin now collecting the data according to the approved procedures. Or if it is unaccess uh, unsuccessful, we have to resubmit with modifications or, or worse, our proposal may receive a rejection. So there are six types of ethical issues. First is the voluntary participation. Uh, your participants are free to opt in or out of the study at any point in time. All research participants or subjects are free to choose to participate without any pressure or coercion. All participants are able to withdraw from or leave the study at any point without feeling an obligation to continue. So uh, your participants also don't need to provide a reason for leaving the study. So it, it is uh, very important to make it clear to participants that are that there are no negative consequence, uh, consequences or repercussions to their refusal to participate in the research. The second one is the informed consent. Uh, participants must know the purpose, benefits, risks, and funding behind the study before they, ad they agree to decline or to join the research. It is a situation in which all potential participants receive and understand all the information they need to decide whether they want to participate or not. It is uh, usually we have to provide a, the participants a text for them to read and ask them if they have any questions about the research. So if they agree to participate, they can sign or initial the consent form. So uh, there are uh, cases now if 
whenever we're collecting data from other people with low literacy, we have to make sure to verbally explain the consent form to them before they agree, uh, they agree to participate. And for participants with very limited English proficiency, we should always translate the study materials or work with an interpreter so they have all the information in the first language. And if ever uh, the research is with children, we have uh, we often need to inform permission for the for their participation from their parents or the guardians. The third one is the anonymity. Uh, you don't know the identities of the participants. Personally identifiable data is not collected. We can only guarantee anonymity by not collecting any personally identifying information, for example, the names, uh, phone numbers, email addresses, the uh, physical characteristics, photos, and videos, etc. But in many cases, it may be impossible to truly anonymize data collection. For example, we have to collect uh, data by phone. So by phone, it cannot be considered fully anonymous because some uh, personal identifiers, for example, the phone number, are impossible to hide. So there is a alternative method, which is the data pseudonymization, where we replace identifying information about the participants with pseudonyms or fake identifiers. The data can still be linked to the participants, but it's harder to do so because you separate personal information from the study data. The next one is the con uh, confidentiality. Uh, we know who the participants are, but we keep that information hidden from everyone else. Uh, we anonymize personally identifiable data so that it can't be linked to other data by anyone else. Uh, you know who the participants are, uh, participants are, but you remove all the identifying information from the report. The next one is the potential for harm. Physical, social, uh, psychological, and all, and all other types of harm are kept to an absolute minimum. So as a researcher, we have to consider all the possible sources of harm to participants. Uh, it can come in many different forms. First is the psychological harm. Uh, sensitive questions or tasks may trigger negative emotions such as shame or anxiety. Second is the social harm. Uh, participation can involve social risk, public embarrassment, uh, or stigma. The third one is the physical harm. Pain or injury can result from the study procedures. And the last one is the legal harm. Reporting sensitive data could lead to legal risk or a breach of privacy. It is also best to consider every possible source of harm in your study as well as a concrete ways to mitigate them. We have to make sure uh, to disclose all possible risks of harm to participants before the study to get informed consent. And the last one is the results communication. We have to ensure uh, your work is free of plagiarism or research misconduct and you accurately represent the results. Uh, plagiarism is uh, presenting someone else's work or ideas as your own with or without their consent by incorporating it into your work without full acknowledgement. All published and unpublished material, whether in manuscript, printed, or electronic form, is covered under this definition. Plagiarism means uh, submitting others' works as if your own. Although it can be unintentional, copy Copying someone else's work without proper credits amounts to stealing. It is an ethical problem in research miscommunication because you may benefit by harming other researchers. There is also what we call self-plagiarism. Uh, it is when you republish or resubmit parts of your own papers or reports without properly citing your original work. Research misconduct occurs when a researcher fabricates or falsifies data or plagiarizes information or ideas within a research report. It is uh, Research misconduct means making up or falsifying, manipulating uh, data analysis or misrepresenting results in research reports, and it is a form of academic fraud. And that's all for my report about 
ethical considerations in research. Thank you. Okay, so again, uh, the validity of research, of course, must consider uh, because the first and most basic ethical issue that may arise in research <coughs> is the <coughs> invalidity of research question. So research is conducted to answer a particular research question and the research conclusion must match with the research question asked in the beginning. <coughs> so uh, the failure to match research question with the research conclusion will be considered a, a violation of ethical considerations. <coughs> Another is the research method is an essential part of every study. <clears throat> so many research methods can be used to conduct research and the most appropriate research method is selected to conduct the study. <clears throat> so choosing the right research method become essential when it comes to ethical consideration. So the following are the points that must be kept in mind when it comes to selecting a research method <clears throat> for a research purposes. Number one, the method should completely fit with the purpose of the research. Number two, the method should not have risk associated with the particular research method used. No? All the risks related to the research method should be declared <coughs> before using it for research purposes. And <coughs> the strengths and limitations of the research method should be evaluated <coughs> before using it for research purposes. Uh, a while ago, no, our presenter mentioned about the consent of the participant. Yes, no. Most of the researchers include participants, so the to abide by the ethical considerations, the researchers need <clears throat> to inform the participants about all the activities taking part in the research. Make informed consent from them before starting research work. So the information that participant can in, are entitled to be aware of is as purpose of the research project, no? the expected outcome of the research or the search, the adverse effect of the research on the participants and who is funding the research project and how the funding will be used. <clears throat> because <clears throat> the reason for taking informed consent from the participant is that they will be aware of what they are getting themselves into. So if they were aware of this research purpose, they can decide whether they want to participate in the research. Now, when there's the confidentiality, no, the risk of the participants and the anonymity of the participants, no, a sampling no, of the participants and accessibility to relevant information must consider integrity and transparency. So <clears throat> ethical considerations are the principles that must be followed in conducting any type of research. <clears throat> Ethical considerations make sure that the no human rights are violated and research being conducted has no hidden agenda. Okay, so I think that's it.